So hello everyone. Today uh, we have a session on getting started with Azure in AutoML, and I, Vilsi Jain from the Azure Developer Community, uh, Jaipur, and I am an open source enthusiastic mentoring many of the communities, and we have today Vivek Raja, who is also a Azure Developer Community organizer, uh, and he is a associate data scientist in Bangalore. So. Uh, today we will be going through all of that, and I hand over to Vivek Raja to tell more about him. Hi, Vishwi, and uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you are having a good time right now. So it's I guess like it's a bit midway uh, midday weekend, and uh, thanks for joining in for today's session. So today's session will be based on uh, getting started with Azure Automate, and uh, let me give a quick intro about our community. So uh, I'm part of Azure Developer Community, and we are currently operating in over 100 cities, and we are more than 4,000 members plus. Uh, I'm actually handling uh, the communities in back in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so in Tamil Nadu, we have 12 communities having uh, together, uh, working under a single hub of Tamil Nadu. And uh, in Chennai, we are more than 400 members there. So actually, what we do in Azure Developer Community is that we host online meetups from uh, like around we uh, host a couple of events every month on different topics, majorly focusing on a particular uh, theme based on a month. So and also we have a network of all uh, levels of people who are in cloud domains who so, are uh, actually a uh, network of both beginners, professionals, as well as uh, one second. So actually, what we do in uh, Azure Developer Community is that we are uh, uh, host a lot of online meetups, and we are a network of both beginners, professionals, and experts. Uh, and also, we start a uh, host study jams from time to time. And today is also a DP100 study jam. So this topic is also part of your uh, certification course of DP100. And we also host many other such events, which will be planned on future, like fun contests and startup talks and podcasts. And today's talk will be focused on uh, Azure Automation. So since uh, this session is, has no prerequisite of machine learning and stuff, we will have a quick, uh, a small introduction about machine learning. We will then see what is automated machine learning, which is called AutoML, and what is the actual difference between the conventional machine learning practices we have and the AutoML. Then we will deep dive into the Azure version of AutoML, how we can implement the same. We'll learn through a quick demo, and I will show you the learning resources, and we will conclude up today's event. So the little about myself here is that I'm from uh, Madurai, uh, from Tamil Nadu. I'm working as a data scientist at Cortex BCI, a startup based on brain-computer interfaces and stuff. Uh, I'm also an organizer at Azure Developer Communities in, in Tamil Nadu. I handle three cities, which is uh, Chennai, Coimbatore, and Madurai. I'm uh, certified as uh, Azure Data Scientist, AI Engineer, and Data Engineer. Uh, I have given those exams uh, out of my curiosity and my uh, interest in Azure Cloud and stuff. So besides that, I used to also love participating in hackathons. So I won a couple of hackathons in both international and national things. And on research papers, I worked on a couple of research papers on AI and IoT. Besides all that, I love being part of developer community. So I'm an active speaker, mentor, blogger, and an open source contributor in both AI and cloud. So if you want to connect with me, you can join me, uh, you can ping me on my Twitter, which is at DevekRaja007. So uh, don't mind if it's uh, 007, I'm not James Bond. I created that when I was a very a kid, uh, maybe like 10 or 12. So I just went with that user. So let's just dive in for some today's event. So first, we will talk about what is machine learning and stuff. We'll have a very quick introduction. So I will assume like the audiences have a uh, very minimal knowledge or no knowledge, uh, knowledge about machine learning. So we will start from very scratch and basics. So what is machine learning? So as per some documentation and official uh, definitions, what we have. So it's actually we process data with help of mathematical models so that we will make computer learn without giving direct instructions. And actually, uh, you might have heard about these Java 
which is called artificial intelligence and stuff so the machine learning is actually a part of a subset of artificial intelligence and these machine learning stuff uses algorithms or the mathematical models of data so they actually identify the patterns which is lying in the data so that it will be able to create a model that can predict on the future data so i guess i have been pouring a lot of uh, definition stuff so let's break it down step by step and see uh, what we have there. so uh, just just forget i'm sorry uh, is everything okay no 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 everything is okay i'm saying that that's great oh. uh, we should be diving into machine learning and who are, are here to start with machine learning should get through this and start yep. their journey exactly yeah exactly so yeah, let's just forget uh, whatever we know about machine learning or everything so let's start with the ones we already know which is programming so i guess people might have here might have uh, been do uh, doing programming a little bit or have some experience on it or you might be a, a well experienced person a developer and a programmer but so everyone comes down to this basic uh, definition so what is actually a program so you give an input data and your program consists of some algorithm so uh, the input data is processed using that algorithm and that gives you an output data for example let's take a simple example which is uh, let's uh, you have been asked to write a program to find the square of a number so what's the algorithm you'll be implying there or the logic core logic that will be like x square so if you are taking x as an input you have to multiply that x with itself then you to return the uh, output data so that's a conventional way of programming so you'll be writing the code okay i'm taking going to take an input of x uh, i'm going to write a code which will actually multiply by itself then i'm going to return Uh, a function that will return x square as the output data so that's how that's how you actually do the program but when it comes to machine learning you actually doesn't know what algorithm you need to have there you know, you only know about the input and output data you have and uh based on that you will you actually require the machine learning or the computer to learn a particular pattern within the data and come up by itself with an an hypothesis i will soon explain you what is a hypothesis but uh, let's just keep it in mind so let's again jump back to again uh, the same example which is which was x square so let's assume like the model does not know anything about x square but instead i give it a a set of paths called training paths which is of input and output data so what i will actually be giving is i will give the data as like 1 comma 1 so 2 comma 4 4 comma 16 then it can be 10 comma 100 so and so so which means you know that the input and output pair so one uh, is uh, one is a square of 1 uh, four is a square of 2 and 16 is a square of 4 and 100 is a square of 10 so we are given the input pair now you require the machine learning model to identify the pattern between that the relationship between that existing between the input and the output pair uh, output data so the machine learning model will try to establish a relationship and comes up with a hypothesis like it's saying i have prepared uh, i have found out there is a relationship but i'm not very sure like will this relationship will give a better accuracy for unknown data so that's called hypothesis uh, so uh, we will then confirm the hypothesis by sending out some test input so uh let's assume like uh, we know uh 9 gives 81 so what we'll do is since the model has given us a hypothesis we will say to the hypothesis that your input is now 9 what will be your output so if it returns 81 then the hypothesis is actually correct then we can accept like okay the model has come up with a exact uh, like a very good hypothesis that can predict the relationship between input and output data so that's what is called machine learning so this is how we have been doing instead of that the hypothesis is a same as algorithm but it's not exactly equal because the hypothesis might differ from the actual algorithm which is existing there so since x square is a very very simple programming stuff we have taken into consideration imagine there is 15 or 16 or n number of input data which is mapped to a single output or n number of output data so now the things will get complex and uh, we can know for sure that the ml model will come up with 
than what we have to do for a deterministic way of writing our program. So that's the shiva. So let's take a simple example. Uh, so there are different types of machine learning we have. One is supervised learning. So supervised learning is about the, uh, we'll give the model both input and output data. So what, what I have explained that in the previous slide. So, it will, uh, so the model will try to establish a relationship between the input and the output uh, data. So that's called supervised learning. And in unsupervised learning, there is a technique of machine learning called unsupervised learning, which will be acting only on the input data. So there is nothing else given like, okay, this is an exact output you have to find for this input. No, nothing like else. We will just give an input data and the machine learning model, we require the machine learning model to perform some data insights based on the, what you have given in the input data. So let's take a simple example. Like uh, imagine uh, you give uh, the information of uh, a classroom student, uh, a classroom, like uh, a children, their age, their height and weight uh, in a particular classroom. Let's take a school example question. So if you want to categorize our people based on some similarities of both age, height and weight uh, factors, then the machine learning model should act on, uh, or acts only on input data and you cluster them based on some similarities. So that's a simple example of unsupervised. So here we can do clustering and uh, so and so. We uh, group the data based on some similarities and patterns without actually have some output data. So that's what is so. So we address the data sets without any labels or structures. We just find the patterns by grouping the data into clusters. So there is a third way of actually uh, handling the machine learning techniques, which is like reinforcement learning. It's like actually uh, it's a reward and penalty based learning. It's like teaching someone. So imagine like uh, uh, you tell someone like, okay, uh, I would exactly tell you what to do, but every time you do something, uh, to achieve a particular objective, I will suggest say whether you have done it right or wrong. And based on that, you have to keep improving your actions so that you will come up with a better bit. So uh, I can just break it down. Uh, so imagine uh, you, uh, there is a baby who wants to walk on a straight line from one end of the living to, uh, room to the other end. So the baby has just started walking. So what you do is, you don't give any direct instructions to the baby, but just ask the baby to come to you, who are uh, where you are actually in the other end of the living room. So the baby itself tries to figure out by uh, uh, to overcome the obstacles and so on and so. So if the, actually the baby fails to reach you, or like if it falls down in between, you just say, okay, you haven't actually done, in a, like uh, you again, ask the baby to retry, retry. And when the actually uh, baby does a good increment, you give keeping rewards. Let's say you give chocolates to the baby. So it's like, that's the reinforcement. So you keep practicing some uh, an, uh, uh, an agent, uh, so an operator, that's actually an agent. So agent is your baby here. So environment is your living room and the obstacles are the ones. So you keep giving a reward of Good, good rewards when the baby starts walking for a very good distance. So you keep do that, you keep doing that till the baby actually uh, starts walking from your one end of a uh, living room to other. So this same technique is actually followed by uh, major uh, stuff in uh, in machine learning, like self-driving cars use reinforcement learning and stuff. So what is actually the benefit of using machine learning. So, so now we have actually seen about what is machine learning and uh, what are the types of machine learning. We know the difference between the conventional and classical programming as well as uh, the difference why we actually uh, use machine learning and stuff. So now it might be easier to break down and ourselves to understand what the benefits we have. Here. So actually the benefits are, we'll be actually able to uncover the insights of the data. So we are able to establish a relationship and patterns and so on, so which is quite really complex one if you are trying to do it in a deterministic way, like writing an algorithm or a, a program or something like that. And to improve the data integrity and enhance the user experience. So imagine you are going to a very famous e-commerce website, like let's say amazon.com or, e uh, or Flipkart or Snappy, whatsoever. So you go to an e-commerce website, you purchase something, and every time you do something, they recommend that, okay, this object or this uh, things you buy is also 
that's actually they uh, they uh, find like okay people who all buy uh, a cricket bat will also buy a cricket ball along with that so that's what they will recommend uh, you to buy because the many users have done the same so it's like to enhance your user experience or like uh, whenever like uh, there is a new things you might want to really explore or recommend the things you want to buy or something like that so then do that so let's uh, there's another very good example called spotify so that recommends you the best songs according to your music taste and genres and everything right so it enhances your user experience based on your current uh, music and the songs you hear and everything so we anticipate the customer behavior and everything and that due to this insight we'll be actually able to lower the cost and uh, drive an optimized way of running a business and everything so uh let's now since now we know, know like what's machine learning and what benefits it gives us and what are the types of machine learning we have uh now it's time to understand what are the stages we have in machine learning what are the steps we do follow to do machine learning stuff so for people who are very very new to this uh you might have uh put some castles in your mind or maybe like you have some myths and misconceptions of uh what is machine learning and whether it is hard to perform or something like that but let's try to simplify the process what we do there so uh, since uh let's start from the basics which i have actually said you so which means we have an uh, input and output pairs of data or something like that so which means you have a data with you so the first thing is you need to collect the data for the real life problem for whatever problem you are trying to solve uh for example let's take a simple uh, example of uh classifying uh and plant based on its uh, type of the type of the leaf and the petal it has let's just take a simple example uh so the people who might have actually worked in machine learning or stuff they might know that i'm talking about either stage so uh for others let's uh let's not matter like uh, let's keep a, a very simple and uh, basic generalistic way of doing this so since we have already discussed like uh, there we need an input and output pairs which means we need data set so to find the data set we need to find the, the data source where we can actually collect the data so for industries maybe like you need to find it from your iot devices or if it's like uh, uh, if you are doing some image analysis or like for cctv camera and so on, so, on, so you need to get the inputs from your cctv cam and so on, so there are multiple ways of identifying the data source so once you identify the data source you collect the data from different data sources and you put together so as you know like the real life and the real world data might not be as accurate as you think so because there is always a, a fraction of error and missing of data and the data might not be as uh, formatted as you require for so once you collect the data from every web it's your responsibility to organize the data so you can start the machine learning process so to uh, that will actually help us help you to uh, reduce the errors in building the model so what are the things you actually do in uh, after data collection is that you find what are the anomaly uh, anomalies or if there is any impurities in the data you try to remove those impurities by removing the rows or like something like that and you transform the data such way like it becomes easier to understand and something like that so maybe like you can uh, if you having a, a something a data set based on a person and the, it it has a, a birth date so instead of dealing with birth dates it's better to convert that into age factor which which will make much more sense so those are the data transformation which you can do and after that uh, once you actually clean the data and you feel like this data is ready to go to learn uh, to build a machine learning model then that's it so we have done the data and collection and processing so now it's time to train the model so what we do is uh, imagine let's go back to the same uh, idea there so what i i create a training pass and i ask the machine learning model to train on that to create a hypothesis then i give an in test input and i will predict the test output and see how is the test output is the exactly the same which i need to have it. so with this what i will do is now we have a very big data source we split the data so that uh, let's have 80% of data for the machine learning model to learn and let's test it out by having it at 20%
useful device you will uh, you select a particular there are multiple machine learning models to do something so for classification or for regression you can go for uh, linear regression and so on so there are multiple models let's not actually uh, deep dive in not to deep dive in that let's just assume like we have some uh, data and we are going to select a model so based on the type of the problem we are going to deal with we'll select a particular range of models which should be applicable to uh, to train we train the model and by the model is nothing but a function which has many steps of uh, a statistical way of finding a relationship so as usual so if it's a statistical model you have to pass a n number of parameters so you have to tune the parameters such that you will give out the best model so once uh, you train and you satisfy like okay once you are training the model you now take the testing part and give that to the model and see how well it's predicting so you compare that predicted values with the actual data what you have and see how well it does that so if it's poorly performing you have to still change the parameters and even after changing the parameters if the model is not performing very well you have to go with other models so this process must be iteratively done so that we will get a better model so then we actually uh, the validate the model is where you actually validate with the test data set and you evaluate the results and you finalize the model once you find like okay this model is giving me good results i will use this for my real life predictions so for the real life predictions so now you have a model which will actually take the real while inputs and based on that it will give the model outputs and with the model outputs you'll be actually uh, making sure that okay uh, now i am getting the predictions and based on that you will be putting that your production use so this is the what we observe the reason why we are going to these machine learning steps is that we will be actually able to do all these steps with the click of a button in azure automate so that's where we are going to jump right now so what is automated machine learning so this has become a very big boom in very recent uh, years so many people who are not actually programmers or uh, uh, they might uh, there is a very big percentage of people who are actually or uh, researchers or maybe a non data scientist uh, maybe like uh, they might be involved in more on like in analysis and stuff also but they still want to perform machine learning stuff. so since machine learning process has a huge number of iterations and uh, uh, which involves you to study uh statistical and mathematical details so that you will come up with a better model now that makes difficult for non machine learning engineers or non data scientists to start with that so that way this automation jumps into place and uh, it will automate all the tasks you require to do with a simple click of uh, with actually you can do that with sdk or with ui or mp that's what you do so that's where we actually uh, automation comes into play so what is actually the automation will do so what you will do is uh, let's go back to the same steps which we had discussed for machine learning so it's like uh, you you will say this okay this is my data source you will upload the data source somewhere and you tell that okay collect the data from there and you perform all the necessary stuff to clean the data and then you select all the necessary models you want to do so once you select like n models uh, you perform the machine learning stuff and find the best model once you find the best model try to hyper tune the parameters so that you will get the best model out of it then deploy it. so this is as same as what we have discussed so far so all these processes will be done by uh, uh, the automation itself so we will only give the input of the input data and then it itself will do the necessary like we will give few instructions and the rest of them will be actually done by it. so we will tell that okay do the all the necessary transformations and do so and so so that will take care of it it will then select the best models will do the hyper parameter tuning then it will give you the best model so you can relate to the processes what's involved in that so now comes a question so if optimal is really a big boom and it's uh they use as a time of uh, any person who is in machine learning why still people are practicing machine learning practices why there is a necessary like people all together can move from uh all together can move from their conventional ml practices to automated right? so this question might have actually arisen so that's where you
should you use autonomy and when should not be so if people has not completely migrated from one service to another service so which is autonomy is actually very much superior because it reduces tasks and time and everything efforts and everything so if people haven't completely moved there must be some drawbacks which is there in the autonomy so we are going to discuss when you should use autonomy and when should you use your conventional ml practices so first let's see the benefits what we have there so autonomy uh, this can be used by anyone who does not have a very good knowledge of machine learning but still wants to create a machine learning model so let's say like if you are an application developer and you still want to create a machine learning model for one of your services uh, you don't know anything about machine learning but you still want to integrate that with your application. go to autonomy upload the data create a model download it and integrate it with the application and get started that's it there is no way to actually uh, for you to deep dive and see uh to deep dive into the machine learning practices and think what should i actually implement and code and everything. so which means it, it saves your time and resources so when it comes to researchers and something and we actually uh i myself have published a couple of research papers we do a lot of work on iterations and trial and error methods and everything which actually takes a couple of months to be exact uh on first we need to set the template of the code then we need to actually explain the different models and different techniques and so on so since they, that includes a lot of combinations and that combinations will actually triple or like increase your time very rapidly so this one you can do the same techniques with reduced number of uh, time and resources of course uh, you can also leverage the best practices of data science so which means you know you should know like why this model is the best performing model and why should you should go for it and everything and what is a agile programming because it might uh, uh the changes might occur any time and you keep have to improving your model according to the new data that's improving so imagine like if you take the e-commerce uh, website user experience uh, way back in 2010 or something that's very much different of what we do right now right so which means the people's approach to the e-commerce website or the people's user experience has drastically changed and the percentage of people who are who are purchasing on e-commerce website have must have been greatly improved so which means your conventional model which you have deployed in few years back might not really work now so you have to keep improving your model and so on so so that's very the automation comes into play like if you are non programmer you can leverage some machine learning practices go for it if you are having a very very too complex data but you don't really have the time and resources for that to invest your efforts go for automation or if you don't have the exact domain knowledge for that so imagine if you are working on different domains such as finance or medical or any other use cases but you don't really have that insights don't worry automel will take care of, like which feature you should consider more and which feature you should not and so on and so forth. and it's a very quick implementation uh, we'll also see a quick demo uh, right now and also it will help us to build very complex model and with a uh, huge number of combinations and stuff so i will now discuss uh, why where you should not use automel so if your automel gives you a better way of uh, finding a good accurate models mm -hmm. so if the models are actually uh, it will be a very decent model in a less amount of time but if you want to really build a model which has very accurate uh, stuff uh, like a uh, very accurate model is where you precision really matters and you want to invest on the domain what you are dealing with and everything then i guess it will be better approach where you do the machine learning practices by yourself and there are few things where you can automate not necessarily the entire end to end but there are few things you can automate in the autonomous so that's where this will come into play so now just we will now uh, try to uh, sync up the information what we learned about autonomous and to the features which azure really provides us in the uh, autonomous part so uh we will in azure automate it will create you number of pi pipelines in parallel because uh, more number of algorithms will be trying to uh, train on the same data and we will be fine tuning it and so on so uh it will also give you the best results and everything and based on that you can set the exit 
you should actually stop performing the automation because you can keep improving your model in different ways you can try iterating it in more and more ways but you have to give an exit criteria so that uh, you should feel satisfied okay if my model has achieved 90 plus percentage of accuracy or if it trained for more than n hours then i'm satisfied with the model i have here so that's ex exit criteria you can provide them so instead of just going through this uh, it will be much more better uh, to deep dive into uh, the tactile experience but i will give a very simple introduction about that so we'll first identify it's our responsibility to identify what type of problem we are dealing with it's a classification or forecast or regression and you have to choose a platform which you are convenient with so if you are actually good at programming but still want to leverage azure or ml you can go for python sdk or else if you want to just work with a ui and go for ui based learn uh, doing so you can go to the azure portal and do the stuff both are exactly the same and what type of data source you have and where the data source is actually stored and what is your compute source like whether you have to train your model in local compute or if you want to uh, provision a new uh, machine learning compute in azure and do the necessary training there and you can configure like what are the different uh, feature session and the, what are the metrics you can configure it for and once you submit it will give you all the results of the results of all the models which are trained with and also uh, the best model and the model file you can get from that so let's actually dive into the demo pack which will make more sense right now so So what I'm going to do is go to your Azure portal. So once you go there, uh, go to uh, one second. Okay, I guess now it will be much more better. So go to create resource and search for AI and machine learning. So we are going to create a machine learning resource. So go and create it. So don't worry about the subscription. Subscription is where uh, if you are under free trial, you can go for the free trial subscription and so on and so. I can create a new account for 12 months uh, in free dot Microsoft Azure free account. If you are actually new to this, you will get three month, 12 months of free trial with $200 credit. So you are always free to explore with that. You can always create your free model there. So now uh, give resource group is where you logically contain all the resources uh, so i'm going to give create a new resource group so i'm going to give that az dev so this is actually today's workshop i'm going to give a new name which is auto ml az june 30 so region can be uh, preference central US or whatsoever you prefer for, and it will create all the necessary stuff. Then I'm going to review and create it. This will actually uh, create a resource uh, which has all the necessary storage account and everything. So let's the validation has passed and we are free to create uh, this one. So create it. So we can show that the deployment has started. So the deployment might take a couple of minutes here. So let's wait for it. So if you are actually uh, having a side-by-side -side approach of coding along with me or doing the same thing, uh, you can follow it because I'll be taking the same time exactly of you, you can just follow my steps if you are doing that actually. Or else this video will be available post the live session, so you can refer to it anytime. So let's give a couple of uh, minutes for the resource group to create and everything. So till then, I, I guess I can take some uh, questions. Uh, do we have any questions here? Uh, thanks for everyone yes. who have joined. In. 
uh, but uh, since yeah, okay, I guess uh, yep. What okay, we have. What time? Yep. Uh, the limitations are like uh, since we won't be uh, the first thing is cost. You have to actually spend your bucks to do that. Uh, that's uh, the reason is that uh, you are actually saving your time and resources, and obviously you have to spend for it. So pricing will be a factor there. And secondly, uh, there is actually a difference between a tailored fit clothes and ready-made clothes. Right? So automobiles is a ready-made cloth, and you have to compromise with few of the adjustments and everything. But if it's a tailor-made, it will be a best fit for you. So it same applies same here. So if it's an automobile, you have to uh, deal with few of the less accuracy, or it will give you a decent accuracy, but not the best you are expecting it for. And also there is a limitation on the features where uh, the portal or the SDK provides us. Uh, then, but of course, you can always opt out and go for uh, conventional machine learning practices. Though it will take you more time, that will give you the best results and so and so. I hope that has answered you the question. So, uh, let me switch back and see if my uh, deployment has been done or not. So, okay. So now, uh, let's get back to the remaining questions if, they, if there are any in the end of the session. Uh, now my machine learning is created. So I'm going to launch the studio. So machine learning studio is actually a UI based where you can perform all the machine learning stuff. So today we are just going to perform uh, AutoML. So what you have to do is in the sidebar, there is a something called automated machine learning. So let me increase the size here as well. Oh, now it's better. So I guess now that will be visible. So go to automated machine learning. Here they have all given you all the documentations, but uh, let's start with the flow since you have discussed so far. So what I have to do is I have uh, to create, first I have to import a data set or do something else. So uh, I can show uh, where is a data set I have to do. So either it can be from open data sets or from the local file or the data store, if you're actually using a data store in Azure or if it's a web file for anything else. So I'm going to select uh, an open source data. So uh, one second, I, I guess uh, we'll go with my conventional local file. Uh, so uh, today we are going to see a simple classification model where uh, to predict whether the passengers in the Titanic ship will survive based on their details like age, gender, and other factors. So going with Titanic data set. Actually, I had a, a data set with myself. I guess it's in other results group, so that I'm not able to handle it. So as of now, the limitation is that uh, uh, the Azure can only handle tabular type of data sets, not any other type of data sets like image or something oh. like that. So yeah. as of now, only this support is there. So that's one of the limitations, I would say. So I'm going to next, I'm going to upload the data sets. Uh, let me search for that. Uh, I'm sorry. OK, I currently don't have. Let's download the file. It's not the key. So I'm going to the Kaggle and downloading the data set. It's asking to sign in. So I already have my Kaggle, so it's not a big thing. So uh, let me download this train file. So uh, here we go. So I'm going to upload this file here. Okay, we have this file. So, so this is being uploaded. Uh, so what I will do is now I will. Uh, it's getting uploaded, and now we are going to pass the relevant stuff uh, and do the necessary. 
settings and preview. So it's a comma delimited, which is a CSV file. So it's UTF-8 and everything. So do we have to skip rows? Uh, there are a few program files where you have to skip the first two and something like that. So now we, since we have the headers, that's, there is no necessity for to skip rows. And uh, these are the details which we have here. So it's like passenger ID. Uh, P class is a passenger class. So which class of passenger where the people belong to and the name of the person and what gender they have, the age. And uh, PIB, SP is like how many siblings they had and how many parents were there on board with them and what's the ticket number and what was the price they paid for the ticket and uh, whether they had provided with cabin and if the cabin, what's the cabin number and uh, whether they have uh, embarked it and other details of everything and where they actually go uh, gone for that destination. And if one means they have survived and zero means they didn't survive the crash. So that's the whole point of the data. So let's go with the next one. So now I can see like what are the necessary columns which I should include for my machine learning practices. So passenger ID does not really contribute to machine learning uh, model because it does not have any relationship with the ID and the stuff. So I'm going to remove it. And P class, yes. Uh, based on which class of, uh, the person belong to, it actually contributes the survival rate. So let it be. Name does not really matter here. So let's defend it. And let's keep the age and the gender here because the reason is uh, the women and the children were given first preferences to evacuate the sinking ship so they might have a better chances of survival than males so it's, let's keep those factors there and whether they had the parents or not uh, let it be because that also matters a lot, uh, to the survival and ticket number does not really matter and how much time and what was the price they paid for it uh, I don't think, don't think so and home destination uh, yes, it does matter because uh, if they have actually got down of the Titanic ship way before the crash has happened, which means they have survived. So the destination also might really matter there. So you might have actually seen there are like the strings which are there, uh, which is like P class actually gives you numbers like integers, but there are when you go for gender, it has actually a string called female, males, and so. So what will the machine automatically does is that it automatically converts these into uh, it will assign itself like male is zero, female is one, and so on, so so that uh, since you know like it's it's not able to process a string, but it can process integers. So these will be auto encoded there. So these are the transformation which is already done by the auto ML itself. So these are the strings will be done there. So let's I have removed the necessary and I have included the necessary columns. Now we are ready to go with it. Uh, let me again reduce so that I don't miss the run. Okay, so I will profile this data set for future use uh, so as of now. So I created this data set. Now we are going to configure the run. So this is our data set. I'm going to configure the run for my automated machine learning. So let me create like AZ auto ML experiment. And what is the target column? So we have to predict whether uh, the person has survived or not. So survive is the target. And the compute, we have to do that. So uh, let's create a simple compute here. So go with the very base uh, conventional one and make sure that this also costs you here. So pricing also matters. So AZ compute and minimum nodes can be one, uh, zero, and one. Uh, let's go with the basic settings. Uh, need not worry about here. So let it create and provision a VM for us to run. So it will take a couple of minutes because that will provision your uh, a, a VM exclusively for this uh, auto ML. So this uh, virtual machine type has few things, which is memory optimized and it got four cores and 28 GB of RAM and 56 GB of storage. I think that's well enough for us to uh, go with it. So if you really want to 
and uh, like the uh, compute resources you can go for it so the compute has been provisioned so let's go we know this is a classification problem because uh, it predicts whether the person survived or not so it's a classification problem which comes under supervised training now it's time for us to set the uh, other thing so since a uh, few people are here of uh, bigness uh, let's uh, go with the basic stuff i will say like precision score is what we actually use or aoc score for uh, to see whether we had a uh, good accurate model so let's go with aoc that's what classification we go for it and what's the exit criteria so when should i actually go for it uh, it can be either the time of execution of hash and what will be the precision uh, model and what will be the list of models which i should not use to run the uh, thing so i will actually eliminate few of the stuff so i will only go with the basics uh let there be random forest boosting i will only go for uh SPM, logistic regression, and decision tree, uh, and random forest. Uh, let me just train with four models alone. I don't want other models here. So if you if you require, uh, you can just go for other models. And how much time does it really you want it to go for? So let it be one point fifteen minutes, or uh, should be at least thirty. Uh, so point five hours is a minimum. So uh, what would be the threshold like? Uh, what would be the accuracy you have to let's say i need more than 0.9 of percent accuracy and what is a validation type that it be auto may not go with uh, let's go with the convention and when you give finish your automated machine learning model will start uh, running so you can go and see which models are there and what will be the output of the same so since this will go for half an hour Uh, and i'm sorry like my earlier demo was not currently available with me uh let me try to check it out if that is available so let it train and so and so mm, i will switch back to my resources and check if my resources are there okay we do have So, um, I'm sorry. Like currently, we do not have the existing one, but uh, I can show you what results we actually get at the end. Mm -hmm. So now we can see this is running. So go to uh, stuff and see like. Uh, the runs which are running so which means uh, each one uh, run is actually submitted for each model and all the necessary uh, 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 i mean that uh, training and the hyperparameter training will take place here so once you uh, finish uh, you list here will be the list of all the models which is uh, and their accurate scores which you have got for and this will show you the uh, the accuracy you have so once uh you have listed down this will be a list of tabular column of all the best models you can select a model and deploy it and you can use it for your uh or demo stuff so we have done a very good machine learning process within a couple of minutes of learning so this is as simple as for you to get started with machine learning here so uh so this will be also part of your dp100 certification course so dp100 is actually uh it's for microsoft uh, data scientist associate it covers all the machine learning and data science solution you have to implement in azure and automl is one part of that so in the actually we are hosting azure machine learning series as part of my chennai community so stay tuned for uh, other future sessions where we will be discussing more on machine learning and azure so you can get on the flow so for you to get started so if you are actually very new to machine learning i have written a very basic blog on my medium account so you can go there and check and also for the necessary uh, documentation you can check here if you want to create a free resource azure account uh, 
uh, go for free account you will get 12 months of 200 dollars of credit and these are the auto ml and related machine learning applications do we have any question or answers right now uh, any more questions Uh, if the questions are not available, I guess we can uh, move for the next part here. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, so, Vivek, yeah, I, I, have a, I have one question. Uh, I am feeling really great to, to learn all the automation of ML. So, I want to ask that can we do all the ML yes. part like from the Azure? Yes, uh, like, uh, we have to this, make a recommendation system or anything. So can we automate that? Uh, yes, actually, that's one of the limitations we have with Azure AutoML. So as of now, the, uh, we are only providing tablet data. And for the tablet data, you can only perform uh, three types of uh, machine learning practices, such as uh, it can be either regression or classification or forecasting. So these are the three types of uh, machine learning uh, techniques you can perform as of now in Azure AutoML. So more features, features, and the processing will be added in future. So uh, for you to prepare uh, uh, like recommendation system and stuff, I guess it's better started to get started with Azure ML on Python SDK and stuff. And few of the things where you have to automate or do something like that, you can switch back to AutoML to uh, like to iteratively find the best model or something, then again switch back to uh, your conventional machine learning practices. Okay, great. So thank you. And uh, we have Ravi, uh, he's asking that for a free Azure account, we need a credit card. Anyway, we can get without a card. Uh, Ravi, if you are a student, so you can get a subscription for 12 months or uh, but otherwise it, you, you have to give the your credit card, right? Right, Vivek? Yep, that's uh, for free accounts. Uh, we have to give our credit card and only then the provision. But don't worry, you won't be getting charged uh, unless you are only within the free tier limits and you don't overdue your $200 credit. This I said, you won't be actually charged and it's valid for 12 months. So if not, actually, uh, besides if you're not a student or you're not part of Microsoft uh, Learn, I guess, so you won't be actually have any Azure passes. The only way for us to go through is to give our credit card details, but assure that it's worth it. So, uh, do you have uh, any more questions here? So, we'll, I guess we can conclude with a few of uh, the remaining part of the presentation and we can conclude it off. So, one second. Yes, sure. So, uh, so we have, uh, I have set up a repository. So my GitHub profile is Vivek0712. So we have a repository called azdev10. So if you have actually missed any of the meetups or if you want to have access to presentation decks we do on every meetup, or if you want to have a start your own collaboration of mission open source projects, or if you require any mentoring for your own project which involves Azure, or the study resources or everything, this is one stop place for everything. You can ping us for uh, this one. Go to uh, my your GitHub, my, my GitHub profile, which is Vivek0712, and you can create an issue or do a pull request, or you can directly ping me for any other resources and types. So one more thing is I'm very much proud to say like we are being listed, this GitHub community has been listed in uh, my official Microsoft newsletter. So uh, one of my sessions, earlier session, as well as uh, the GitHub community, which is Azure Developer Community of Library Code and Learning, which was actually uh, listed in official uh, Microsoft newsletter. To sign up for this, uh, search Azure Microsoft newsletter, and that will redirect you to the newsletter. Sign up for up-to-date, interesting news articles, and to stay within the trends and everything. And it's actually uh, well curated by Microsoft. So there was another one of the uh, events which are featured in Microsoft as well. Uh, Azure Developer Community is now available in Meetup. You can ping us in either Meetup or uh, you can ping us in Twitter. So with Twitter, you can AZDev India and then also in LinkedIn. Or you can directly message any of the organizers you have. We also have a few clubhouse sessions. 
so please drop in to find azure dev community club and you can join us a member for to join us for audio sessions where we'll be discussing on uh, various topics such as uh, tips and tricks type of theme of the month fun contest certifications and more and so and i love writing blogs so if you want to have a, a look at my free blogs go to medium at uh, vivek rajan 98 or to dev uh, which is vivek 0712 uh there are few interesting real time use cases uh stuff you can uh, have a look at that and if you want to personally connect with me i'm available in social media handles in linkedin i am vivek raja ps and then github i am vivek 0712 and in twitter i am vivek raja 907 uh, you can send a direct message if needed or you can tag me in any post or tweet or anything else to get started it is my personal email id where you can drop in for any other recommendations feedback or suggestions or collaboration so what we have yes, to do have until next this, yeah sorry vivek and we have given this yeah. all the links of our linkedin twitter and my linkedin twitter in the in this uh, youtube description you can go and check from there also yes vivek you yeah. can continue yep great uh, so until next time still uh, we have just gone past our second wave and hope so we don't have the third wave so Uh, anyway, stay safe and uh, wash your hands regularly and wear masks when you go out. And uh, I think before we just conclude, uh, let's go back and check if uh, how our model performed there, so that we can have uh, experiment data like what really happened. So actually, it got completed, so that's good. Uh, so. what happened was we actually got many more models and this model actually performed really well it gave us what say i'm sorry uh, it gave us 0.97 of accuracy with 100% sampling so let's view the explanation of what really happened there and the accuracy was 0.92 and aoc macro was 0.97 and the precision recall graph is pretty good at here actually and our ROC curve seems to be really good if you are not really familiar with this one uh, it's not does not matter but if you are into machine learning but uh, so you might have understood what really happened there so we have done a very good machine learning process in just 15 minutes we are able to create a, a very good model with 0.97 of uh, uh, weighted accuracy and stuff so If you really want it, you can go and deploy this model and so on and so. Or if you want to explain the model, it will show you step by step approach how this uh, model uh, training took place and everything. So until then, uh, take care and stay safe. So we have actually done the machine learning processes and all that. Uh, thank God, actually I checked back before we concluded. So thank you everyone, and we'll see. I guess we can conclude as of now. Uh, thank you so much vivek for joining us and telling your uh, telling mo most important tips and how to start thank you so much vivek yeah thank you thank you for having me here uh, should i end